Sleepers Podcast. Happy Friday, everybody. Friday, April 5th. We're probably in the air right now if you're listening to this, or I'm driving to Carter's terrified that I'm about to be in the air. One of the two. Just know that I'm in shambles as you listen to this right now. Uh, Card, how are you today? <laughs> I'm good, man. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. We're going to have a nice little trip. We're going to hit the bar probably before the flight, have a couple couple cocktails, you know, something. You know, a great, great man once told me that flying sober is for birds. And last time I checked, you're not a bird. Am I right, Gregory? <laughs> I'm definitely not a bird. If I were a bird, I would be much more comfortable in my own skin for this trip. Uh, also, what if we're not all right? What, I mean, if, that's what if things go south rather quick? It certainly could happen. I mean, it could. It could. But if you think about it, moments that things have gone south in your life, I've never been present. I'm a North, oh. I'm a north type of friend. It's actually an incredible point. Really, I nothing negative has happened to me when I've been with you ever. Yeah. That's the, wow. Yeah. That was such a flex by you. I know you meant that in like a comforting way, but like I've elevated your life only is like yeah. an incredible flex. Yeah, so we're good. Have I elevated your life only? I feel like I've brought you down sometimes. No, you haven't. You haven't brought me down. Um, I will say this. You do know how to bring out the worst in me. Whoa. I don't want to be that influence on your life. No, I need it, though. Oh. Like, 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 you know, like the dusty argument we had? Yes. Like, that was a tough listen for people. That was a tough conversation. Yeah. I also needed that because in our everyday podcasting and talking, we have not had that type of dialogue ever. I felt the weight lifted off my shoulders. That's true. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I guess we are what we are. We got to move forward. Uh, speaking of problems with flights, thoughts and prayers go out to the Yukon Huskies, Dan Hurley, uh, you know, certainly Tristan Newton, Donovan Klingon, everybody involved with that program, the managers, you know, arriving in a city for a final four, just 62 hours before your first game tips. I wouldn't put that on my worst enemy. That's a harrowing experience, I'm sure. Um, you know, I, I feel so sorry for them. I feel so bad for them. It's really just a competitive disadvantage that they certainly don't deserve after all that they've been through. So thoughts and prayers out to UConn. Uh, and I hope somehow the universe finds a way to make this right that you were there 12 hours after some of your opponents were 62 hours before your first game tips. Yeah. Uh, I, if, if any team can handle that type of just, uh, I, I don't uh, earth shattering life altering adversity. I think the, the Huskies can do it. Completely unwarranted, completely unwarranted as far as I'm concerned. Also, sorry, I got a little distracted here uh, because we got a new tweet. New angle surfaced of Purdue star Zach Eady out on the bar scene in Chicago during the team's layover. Got to give the man credit as he's posted up with an absolute rocket, even in the bucket. <laughs> uh, I'm reading somebody else's tweet for the record. We don't demean women like that here on this program. Uh, Zach Eady's a legend, though. He's a legend. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I always find it funny that like I feel like Eady knows he can't lay low. So like in his head, he's like, you know what? I I got it. Bucket hat. That that'll that'll throw off the scent that I'm the seven four national player of the year. Yeah. Uh I mean, I couldn't tell. I don't, I'm not convinced that is Zach Eady as I look at this picture. Are you a bucket hat guy? No, I actually am very anti-bucket hat. Really? Like in all forms? Just like even like a bucket hat to the beach type thing? Yeah, I don't mean to disrespect uh, a good friend of the show and good friend of me personally in real life, Terrence James, one of my very best friends. He is sort of, I, I think, adopted the bucket hat state of life, state of mind mantra for years. Uh, rarely ever see TJ without a bucket hat in the summer on a boat, anything like that. It, it, look, it's for some people, certainly not for me. I don't think I can rock a bucket hat. I will say I think some people look very foolish in bucket hats. TJ is not one of them, but some people look very foolish in bucket hats, and uh, I'll leave it at that. 
CJ's ability to wear a hat in all settings is is uncanny. I'm talking yeah. about he's wearing hats. I think he sleeps in a hat. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he's a really versatile hat wearer for sure. Uh, okay, should we get to the YouTube comment of the day? Yeah, why not? See, if I don't do any noises or anything while I'm looking for the comment, then it's just silence. But also, I don't want to give people to ah, as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the hope would be like you come prepared with a comment, but clearly you don't do that. I could do that, couldn't I? You definitely could, yeah, because we, we always do it. Would that be me, though? No, I it mean, wouldn't be you. It could be me. Uh, okay, I'll do this one because we I don't think we're going to do an actual video on this, so we can comment it. Um, are you all going to talk about Terrence Edwards Jr. going to Louisville? This is a huge get for Pat Kelsey as he's trying to revamp the entire Louisville roster. Greg, what do you think about that ad for Louisville? And also, like, kind of, have you been – Following Louisville, like the offseason thing, like they've been doing a lot of videos. Pat Kelsey's been rocking the, the the big spectacles, the Harry Potter Hogwarts level specs, throwing up the L's, getting on the plane, like revving people up. Where where are you at with Louisville? Yeah, basketball PJ Fleck is off to a great start. He will always win the random Wednesday when his season isn't in, in action, uh, when he can post a video of himself about to board a plane talking, it's a great day for the Revival. Like, L's up, about to go find the next cards, card nation. I will say my favorite thing about Pat Kelsey and his stupid videos is that uh, he does these so often, you would think he's, like, better at them by now. But, like, he clicks record, and then he just, like, stares at the camera like this for, like, three seconds first. Like, card nation. And it's like, dog, like, you... I go through like some social media training or something. You can edit these before you post them. Like he's just recording a raw selfie, doing it like a middle-aged dad and then not trimming the first three seconds of the video. Uh, I would despise, if that was my head coach, I wouldn't be able to take it. I wouldn't be able to take it. So God bless Louisville. God bless Dusty May for turning down Louisville and uh, making sure I don't need to deal with this. Uh, I have three things to say about the situation. One, this is fire. I just want to let that if I was a Louisville fan, like I this is just elite. Like For I our mean, listeners, let them know what you're saying. You're holding you're holding oh, the L. Apologies. I'm holding up like the uh, the L the Louisville L with the two fingers and the thumb. That's elite. I would use that all the time. I celebrate my threes like that. I do everything like that. That's really cold. Uh two, Terrence Edwards Jr. as an ad for that team in Pat Kelsey's system, I think is going to work. I don't know what that's gonna lead to, but you can sure as hell know that that guy's going to get shots up and probably get his stats and, you know, do his thing. That's a, that's a, that's a good ad. Three, as a Louisville fan, I would be absolutely sick to my stomach that we took the coach from Charleston and then Charleston hires our former coach, who I think is a better coach than the coach that we have for less money than what we hired. Also like, isn't Chris Mack going to be better at Charleston than Kelsey at, at Louisville? I think Chris Mack is unquestionably a better coach than Pat Kelsey is, yes. Okay. That would well, that I mean that, that can't sit right with you if you're a Louisville fan. I'm sorry. No. Uh look, I think Louisville fumbled the Chris Mack situation massively. And I know there was stuff going on behind the scenes that made it made it make sense for a departure there. But um I to me, I I've said it repeatedly. I think Mack's a top twenty coach alive. Like, I, I think the guy is a very good basketball coach. I think that's been very proven at multiple different stops. And they fired him in the middle of the pandemic year, which was his first really bad year at Louisville. He had one really bad year, uh, which speaks to, you know, how good Louisville is. You have one really bad year, you're gone. Better hope that that doesn't happen with Pat Kelsey, because I don't know how much time they're going to give him if this doesn't work. We'll see. Uh, we should do a Terrence Edwards commitment video also. I think we might end up doing that just quickly to put more – on paper basketball thoughts, but okay. Thanks. Thanks to the YouTube comment of the day. Appreciate you. Let's go to the discord. Uh, we'll just jump right into comments today. If you want to join the discord, it's nine 99 a month to join either on a laptop desktop or in the mobile browser on your phone. Uh, that's the number one way to support us. I think we have about 276 people in there right now. We did lose Dr. Doctor. RIP Dr. Doctor, Dr. Doctor. If you're listening to this, hope all is well. We miss you. Uh, we miss your diet oh, tribes. No, he's he's good. He's good. He actually he DM me. He's on vacation. Um, so he's like, yeah, I'm going on vacation. I'm gonna be away from my phone. 
a little bit. So I'm just going to re up my subscription when I get back in like two oh, weeks. Love that. Never mind. But enjoy your yeah, vacation, yeah, Doctor Doctor. <laughs> yeah, he said, he said I need. He said I need to carry on and make sure no Purdue fans get out of line in his honor. But he will be back. Is this Doctor Doctor ducking smoke? You know, Purdue happens to make their first Final Four in 30 years, and Doctor Doctor's nowhere to be found on vacation. Yeah, a, a vacation, a very timely vacation, I might add. Uh, Hope that vacation's not to the Phoenix area. Uh, but yeah, have a great vacation, Doctor Doctor. We miss you. That's what I'm trying to say. Two of the first comment today, Ju Bowie says, furthering the pain discussion. What college fan base do you think has experienced the most pain? I would nominate Nebraska football. Ooh, what fan bases? But Nebraska football has been good before. I feel like there's got to be someone, some other fan base that has literally never experienced any form of winning. I think you need to be a certain level of good in order for the pain to be really felt. Like if all you know is pain, you might not even realize it's pain. You know what I mean? Yeah, true. I'm trying to think. It's getting philosophical, but yeah. Purdue to me, but prior to this Final Four run, I would say Purdue basketball is one. Like all of your best years ended in tragedy. Um, I think prior to this year, Michigan football would have had an argument. Like got dog walked for a decade and a half by their rival and never won a big one ever. Um, I don't know. To me, those have kind of been the Midwestern or big 10 fan barometers, in basketball and football. Yeah. I was thinking or like once prominent, like programs, like if you're a, if you're an Auburn football program, Auburn football fan, I feel like you've had been in the dumps the past couple of years after having success. Yeah. Could be. Or just like a, or just a program that overall, like, there's no way Vanderbilt fans are like excited about anything. Like football sucks, basketball, even though you hire like a Jerry Stackhouse, like just not good. Like in Arkansas, maybe like they have rabid fans and they don't win much of anything. Yeah, true. Honestly, that's probably probably good. But but they also like they make elite eights and things like that. Like they make or they or not sorry, not elite eights. They make sweet sixteens. Yeah. Pepperdine. That's always my go-to when I just joke about program or university of Detroit basketball. (laughs) That's tough. That would be really tough for sure. Uh, Okay. Scrolling down. uh, Well, look, we have burner saying I miss Dr. Doctor. Him leaving us was not a joke. He is gone. We cannot forget him, especially when Indiana signs five portal centers. We need to pour one out for him in UK. We dearly miss you guys. Yeah. Listen, this is a good example of this community we've built. We, uh, I feel like we kind of know everybody. Like we have real, real figures that really matter in this little sleepers world that we live in. And uh, Dr. Doctor in UK, we're certainly two of those. So doors open whenever you want to come back, friends. But uh, we appreciate your presence for whatever time you did spend with us. Thank you. Terrence. Hey, Terrence. TJ says, I love Carter saying his two small ears hear pretty well when he loves to say, huh, what? Or simply repeats back every question Greg asked before answering. What percentage of those do you think I actually hear on the first time? I think you hear them all. I think you you do it to give yourself more time to mentally process and prepare an answer. You'll never know. I I think I have a good read on you on that. I appreciate TJ holding you accountable, though. He's very good at that. There's no one that holds me accountable in this life like TJ does. I'll tell you that. No, no one. Not family, not wife, not anybody. That it kid is, holds me more it, accountable than anyone I know. It's him trying to make greatness out of you, though, right? Like, that. this is what you wish your parents would have done with you? Yeah, but I also think that he's projecting some things. Like, he doesn't want to be hard on himself. He just wants to be hard on me. So he projects to be hard on me. I, I was on date night with Mal last night, and I uh, get a text from TJ in the middle of it that says, Fellas, are your wives crazy? <laughs> I was like, dog, what type of question is that, man? He also compared his girlfriend to Dane Danger a couple days ago. Uh, he, I'm worried he's going through some stuff right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't check the Snapchat group, but, uh, the, the issue he was having was they ordered patio furniture and the doorways are super narrow in like the, the, the homes, apartment buildings, condos, whatever in Baltimore. So like they couldn't get the patio furniture through the door to get the pet, to get up to the rooftop. And that was somehow his girlfriend's fault. Queen V, 
Yeah, somehow. I mean, you know, you know, you, they don't call them. They don't call them. They don't call them deflective TJ for nothing. <laughs> it's a tough teammate, man. Like I, I and I love, I love T. He's a talented kid, but sometimes, you know, you're gonna. Caitlin Clark's gonna tell you you did things wrong if you're an Iowa role player. That's what happens. Uh, Sean Vowell says, I mean this in no offense to Pat Kelsey, but are Charleston getting a better coach than Chris Mack? You just answered this. Yeah, Charleston are getting a better coach. Love that you and Sean are on the, the same page here. Guy says, Jerome Tang sits forward in his desk, beginning to giggle maniacally. His grin stretches from ear to ear. He hangs up a telephone, old school phone, since he's an old school guy. His grin has continued to stretch, and as he now looks like the Grinch. The assistant in the room begins to worry for a moment, but Tang nods. The assistant begins to follow Tang. The grin... The maniacal laughter. He stands up in his chair to get the K-State athletic director and boosters. Tang sits back in his chair. Wait, says Tang. Tang pulls open one of his drawers, revealing sheets and sheets of basketball players. What's this? The assistant asks. The gold mine. Tang slowly points to player after player, starting with Marquise Noel and Tyler Perry. He shows the assistant Brian Greenlee, Braden Smith, Kareem Rogier. The assistant understands for a moment. How many thousands of point guards have you scouted? Tang's grin somehow grows bigger. The height of his head exchanged for width as the smile began passing the outside of his ears. We're in the little apple, and we respect the word little around here. The assistant stands up. He wants to put a stop to it, but he's entranced. He's been conquered by Tang. No, not Tang. He, too, had fallen victim to a disease. He had little point guard disease, and Doug McDaniel was on the roster. I like the attempt. I do. It's 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 a clear reach to be doctor doctor. Um, I also think there needs to be a statement made that there's only one true great storyteller in the Discord, and that's Greg Waddell. I just want to throw that out there. Kids, kids, special with the pen. I appreciate that. Uh, I would say doctor doctor is a great storyteller, but I appreciate guys' attempt there. Also, I appreciate any story about Doug McDaniel. Also, I'm writing a book. I feel like now's a great time to unveil that. You're writing a, what kind of book? Uh, it's a fictional story that I am hoping will be made. It's actually more of a script. I, it's more of a television show in my head, but I'm writing a script for it. So is it going to be a musical? No. I've written musicals before. This is not a musical. Okay. Uh, what happens to the children's book idea? Is that is that on the back burner? No, I have a children's book written. I still think that's a genius idea. Basically, the idea for that – somebody DM me if you want to make this a real thing – uh, the idea for that was a series of children's books that were basically children's stories of great sports moments in rivalries. So like the trouble with the snap children's book form, sell it in East Lansing on campus around Christmas. It does a hit. Uh, UNC beats Duke ex expels coach K children's book form little toddlers are raised in North Carolina households and they love reading that book at bedtime to their toddler. Uh, I think you could just do that for every rivalry. Any, any big moment in a rivalry where one side wins, you could make a children's book out of it and sell thousands of them. It's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you. That's one of my, ma the, the, the TV show I'm writing better idea though. Hopefully no one steals that idea. Yeah, they can get in my DMS if they want to work with me on this. Uh, Jay Meisner says any truth to the must to USC rumors. Believe so, yes. Yeah, for everything I've heard that it the there was a meeting, I, the meeting went very well. Would not be surprised if Mus is USC's next coach. I'm a tad surprised it's not done yet at the time of this recording. That's the only reason I'm skeptical now. But yeah, has me has me thinking. Actually, not even one or two things. Just one thing. He might have went back to either Arkansas or whoever else he's considering and is trying to. Maybe he's trying to leverage something else, but yeah, I think would, he would kill it at USC. He'd do great at USC. The Big Ten should not want those problems. We do, we do not want to see Eric Musselman at USC. Uh, no. Kenny Kaminsky says, "Is there any correlation between Izzo's worst stretch ever and his son being on the team for the same four years it happened, or is it simply a coincidence? Izzo's stubbornness with the portal, Hogard, Sissoko, etc." Yeah. I mean. I did used to have a theory that Steven being on the team uh, was part of that, but I, I think Steven is doing the Lord's work. And Steven also had the most exciting play of our season this year. So we got to respect that. Steven is doing the Lord's work. Uh, it's a complicated answer for me. I think the, the short answer is no. Steven is being on the roster is not to blame for 
Hogard and Sissoko's failures and Izzo's unwillingness to use the portal. He could have done all of that with Steven on the roster. And Steven could have been on rosters with Jaron Jackson and Cassius Winston, and it never would have been an issue. Uh, that's just bad timing. With that said, I do think the whole mental approach to – I call it nepotism, whatever you want to call it. I My program just went through it as well. Like Michigan was worse because we gave a scholarship to our head coach's <laughs> son who didn't deserve it. He was in the rotation. Like at least Tom Izzo drew the line. It's like this guy's the end of bench guy. But uh, I think in general, letting people who don't deserve it for their basketball merits be a part of something bigger can speak to maybe a psychological step back for programs that want to compete at the highest level. I just think that people will do anything to blame everyone, but the actual Izzo. Like this is the closest they'll get to actually blaming Tom Izzo for what has happened. Yeah. And for the record, I, if you're a head coach, you are allowed to put whoever you want on your roster. I am very, I have been the whole time. I've been pro. He should put Steven as a walk on. That's fine. Been, been anti. If I, if I ever have a son and he's ever and I'm ever the head coach of some big university or something like that and he's not good enough to be on the team I uh, he can go in the end zone the thing that does get me though now I'm ranting about this but the thing that does get me is like you know the whole I loved the senior day coverage of Steven like the story that came out about him finding his parents and how much this meant to him to be able to spend time with his dad and even like the journey did a piece on it. There's a video piece. It was beautiful, right? Like I got chill. I get chills talking about it right now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautifully done. The bond between Tom and Steven and all they've done for his life is incredible. Also, like one of my takeaways at the end of all of that is like, has Tom learned at all? Because like his whole stance on all this was like, oh, I, I put Steven on this roster because I so regret how I haven't spent more time with him, how I've, I've like, I've missed so many things we have. I don't have that bond that we would have had if I wasn't so driven by my job. And then he, he puts him on the roster. They go through four years and then the season ends. And all we hear from Thomas, I'm going to die trying to get back to the fight. Like, is he ever going to prioritize this relationship with his, like, is he back to not prioritizing Steven now that Steven's out of the program? Well, eventually you got to not prioritize your kids. This is true. I just, I, it, it kind of like it hit such a resonating note when I was watching it on senior day. And then like the season ended and Tom's like, I will die before I quit this. And I'm like, Oh, so you, you still are prioritizing the thing you say you regret over your son. Then like, <laughs> which oh I, maybe God. I'm stretching. I don't know. Oh, you're, you're, that's a, that's a massive, massive stretch. Is it? I think so. I don't it mean feels, it to be. I just it, feel, it just feels like one though. Well, I don't mean it to be. I really don't. I just like you would think like at a certain point maybe the lesson was learned of like family time is what's important. Yeah, you know, not, not getting also, those vibes. <laughs> yeah, he also he doesn't have to die trying. He right. doesn't have to. It's it's okay. That's all I'm kind of getting at. It's like I like I think it's much more likely Tom will be on his deathbed still seeking that second national championship than it is like spending time with his great like that's you know they're every coach hits a point where they just like retire and become grandpa yeah. i don't think i don't think tom will ever willingly do that ever <laughs> and at no amount of like emotional cut up with violins playing in the background of him talking about how much he he regrets his time like he was born to try and win championships that's what drives him it's not familial things to me from the outside looking in that's what i see that's it okay uh, Travis Nelson says, I think there's a non-zero chance that Dan Hurley sabotaged the plane himself to provide some more motivation. I there's You're never going to get a moment for me where I'm like, there's no way Dan Hurley couldn't have done that. Those words yeah. won't come out of my there's a, a, He could do everything. Every, and nothing is out of, out of play. Listen, just thoughts and prayers, man. 62 hours before their are not enough hours. I mean, what a what a horrible experience these poor kids have to go through. Malik Perry says, Angel Reese, team listed, and she said all this victim BS. If she would, one, she had said something else, like all you been talking shit, now you want pity and sympathy. Well, not from me. <laughs> Cheryl Swoops, WNBA legend, I hope I never see you on camera again. You ever seen a burning vehicle on the highway? 
That was her on Gilbert Arena's podcast. Lord forgive, but not me. Take your old ass and go bake something. She was wrong and incorrect. Then she played the card Uno reverse. I never seen that shit before. Then she backtracked harder than people backpacking in Europe. She is kicked off the island. <laughs> Malik is just, I know I say this every episode. He's not a real person. There's no way. There's just no way. I just, I look forward to it every day because it's so unpredictable. One day I'm going to get caught though. Like one day I'm going to be reading a Malik Perry comment and read something so irredeemably bad. Yeah, well, I mean, he did pull a, like, get back in the kitchen with Cheryl Swoops. I can't support that. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Yeah, also, you missed it. It's not a, it's not a Uno reverse. It's oh, a I don't, 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 I edited that. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's not go backwards. Derek says, is there anything more electric in the Discord than seeing a Malik Perry is typing? <laughs> it scares me. I don't know about electric. I actually feel like a sense of fear when I see him typing. How about a wholesome comment from Malik? Congratulations, Caitlin Clark. You did something amazing. She deserves her flowers. She beat one of the best women's teams ever. Hope she'd be the one to put the WNBA on the map. Caitlin Clark's unreal. Yeah, That's super good. Said. We got we did a Bleacher Report live stream uh, reacting to that game the other night. It was incredible, really fun to watch. Uh, Regress says, debuting a new segment, chat GPT's best attempt at making a Malik message resemble English. Cheryl Swoops, WNBA legend. I hope I never see you on camera again. Have you ever seen a burning vehicle on the highway? That was her on Gilbert Arenas' podcast. The Lord forgives, but not me. Take your old self and go bake something. She was wrong and incorrect. Then she played the card, Uno Reverse. I've never seen that before. Then she backtracked harder than people backpacking in Europe. She's kicked off the island. That did make things semi well, honestly, just fixed the grammar. The The comment's still out of pocket, Malik. Yeah, I, I feel like I got most of that from Malik the first time for the record. So score one for Malik, zero for chat GPT. Uh, Purdue Pete 04 says, I have no free time during hoop season for shows. What shows are you guys behind on or you've been waiting to start that are at the top of the list once the tournament ends? I need to watch Curb, the last season of Letterkenny, and Always Sunny. Yeah, I need to get my show list in in order. Um during basketball season, a lot of my stuff is just like background shows or like mindless shows to watch or like just something the wife's putting on. Uh, I did unfortunately get sucked into Love Is Blind, Charlotte. Um, that 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 took over me. I had no choice. Uh, I peeked in and out on The Bachelor a little bit, uh, just because I was on in the background as well. I don't know what the first show is gonna be when I'm when I'm back at it though. Probably gonna look to you for some suggestions. You had a really good Bachelor run a couple of years back when Matt James was the Bachelor, but then you very quickly turned on him in a way that none of us saw coming. Yeah, I uh, you you saw Matt James' true colors afterwards and how he carried himself, and I I, I can't support that. Yeah, it was it was both a great time and a horrible time to try and get you into the Bachelor with Matt James. He let us down. Um, Did you watch any of the last? Season? You're, wait, have you given up on the Bachelor? Yeah, I haven't watched it in a couple of years. I just uh, – so one of my biggest pet peeves with shows like that is when they don't take enough time off in between seasons. It wears me out. Like, I'll fall in love with a show, binge watch a lot of the old seasons, and then, like, when you get to real life and there's, like, no off season, it bothers me. The Bachelor is one of them because you get, like, The Bachelor, then The Bachelorette, then Bachelor in Paradise, then, like – like, I just felt like I I had four nights of Bachelor content every week, and it was really – destroying me uh and then i did the same with the challenge on mtv used to love it and then they started doing like six different seasons of the challenge with different people every year couldn't handle it so i have not watched it in a couple of years i did tap in a little bit because mal was like obsessed with a couple of girls that made the final i believe on this season but the guy seemed nice he seemed like a good guy do you ever get american idol fatigue no because american idol does it well it's just one season a year it's at the beginning of the year every year uh, like come comes out in March, done in May, boom, come back next year. Gotcha. Okay. Good job by Idol. Once a year. That's what we need. Uh, yeah, I'm still one day is the show right now. I'm destroyed. I'm destroyed. I still have two episodes left. I had to stop again last night. I'm I'm devastated. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, I need I need to do my my show research. Uh, I did go see a movie last night. Um, it is what was the name of the movie? Something something devil related with the movie uh, actually was really, really good because 
the trailer didn't give away anything about the movie. Like I didn't find myself at any point of the movie being like, I knew what was going to happen next. Hmm. And I kind of liked that. Like a little element of surprise. Yeah. Like it was, it was more so like, uh, what's the word? Like psychosomatic, I guess, than actual horror film. Like there was horror involved in it, but it was like, uh, excuse my language, a mind fuck. I love that. Love the, those are my types of films and shows. Yeah. Uh, should we should we like watch a show on the plane together? Should we like each get one AirPod? I mean, we could download a show off Netflix. Is one day on Netflix? I don't know. Also, how do planes work these days? Like, can't you just like text and have Wi Fi on a flight? Yeah. So like, uh, like there is Wi Fi on the flight. Um, you can't like. I don't know if it's good enough to like stream. It's not good enough to stream, but you can text uh maybe scroll social media like twitter but it, it's it's you know it's few and far between but like there's movies on the plane like on the the touch screen we're flying delta so like you got movies live tvs on there like you got everything on there wow great all right i have some plans uh i might just be if i find out i can tweet from a plane might might do some things might be crazy yeah. You know, you can drink on the plane, too, as well. Oh, yeah. I knew that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. I Maynard says, uh, I think they really missed the mark by not doing a reality TV show for some of the women's college basketball players and coaches. I don't like watching the, those shows with my wife. She doesn't like watching sports with me, but we definitely would have watched this reality show and the games involving players from the show together. Definitely. I mean, that's one of the things that uh, I enjoy – uh teams that have good social media accounts like especially like tiktok accounts like they do the series like the little mini mics i love all those yeah there's a missed opportunity in the sports world i think to like do documentary style shows of team seasons as they go on Um, yeah are you talking about like because the prime ones they do like you know there's a oh actually there's a on netflix they just released the manchester that's the first thing i'm watching the manchester city documentary from the season they won the treble just released on netflix I need that all behind the scenes. It's going to be fire. I'll tap into that. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. Like in welcome to Wrexham. I love that. Um, yeah. I feel like that it's, it seems like it's all soccer that they're doing that with for right now. Did you, did you, do you, uh, watch full swing season two? I've only watched like one episode of it. That'd be good for the plane too. Yeah. Got options. Wow. <laughs> I can't wait. So excited. Rowlett, Texas boiler says, can we give the game we all want on Monday, the billing Kling Kong versus God Zaka. God, Zach is god awful. Zachzilla, God ZD, Bake ZD, David versus Zach Lyeth. We're going the wrong direction right now. Yeah, there's got to be something off Donovan. The Don. It's Kling Kong. That's a good nickname. Okay, Kling Kong versus Zachzilla. That's terrible, but we'll That's come up really with something bad. else. Uh, yeah, it's really bad. I don't know. I don't have anything else. Ryan Lyons says, any predictions for the Masters next weekend? Uh, no predictions out of me, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I say this every tournament, but I think it'd be cool to watch one of the dudes that I haven't seen like win that. Like I'd love to see like Homo win it. Uh, I have a certain like five group of golfers I think I want to see win it, but like no predictions. Yeah, I I'm with that. Um, I don't know. I I think it's ludicrous that Scotty is like plus four hundred to win. That's like prime Tiger Wood stuff. Uh, Scotty might win. He's in impeccable form right now, but he shouldn't be that thin of a favorite is, is, is he in impeccable form yeah he's been great every single tournament he's like in the top three if not winning he won a couple already too he always he always does that top three is you know what he does but i mean he's coming off a missed five footer to force a playoff yeah wild uh i mean but the approach shot to get within five feet was crazy yeah, also i have a theory that him being bearded now fixes a lot of his issues I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, I could certainly see that. Okay. 
All right. Uh, yeah, I'll come up with Masters predictions once I research it a little more and we get back from the Final Four. Need a little time. Can't look ahead. All right, that's the comments. Thank you to everybody in the comments section. Cart, uh, tell the people about my bookie. My bookie is the official sports book of Sleepers Media. And no March Madness is winding down. We still have an enormous offer for you to take advantage as we approach the end of the season here. If you use promo code Sleepers, my bookie will match your first deposit bonus up to a thousand dollars. That's up to a thousand dollars using promo code Sleepers. The madness is winding down, but you still have time to take advantage of this offer. My bookie has everything you need player parlays, prop bets. They have extra predictions. They make it easy to play your way and get paid. Take advantage of this offer right now. Do not miss it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let's get to the show. First topic today. Uh, what do we want to do first? You want to do AJ Store first? Let's do AJ Store first. You seem excited Store. about this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's do that first. Reports that AJ Store is demanding seven figures for his new destination. What do you make of this? One million dollars. That was a great Dr. Evil impression by me. Uh, look, we already did our AJ Store, uh, you know, in the transfer portal video. We are massive fans of AJ Store. AJ Store should be wanted by all the big programs, right? Like, uh, I, I understand why all the big programs are after him. With that said, I don't even know what AJ stands for. I would say something. Andrew Justice store uh a million dollars is crazy my man it truly is it's i mean if you're trying to sell us on that you're a million dollar player the resume doesn't stack up with that and i don't know if even the play stacks up with that as much as he thinks it does uh, that's just uh, that's a crazy offer or crazy ask in my opinion um there's a lot of rumors swirling around one if this number was even asked for, there's there's also rumors that like he asked Kansas for a million. They said we can do seven hundred fifty thousand or leave it, and store left it. So like he might be locked in thinking he's gonna get a million from somebody, and uh, maybe there's a school out there who will do it. Maybe there's a school in Champaign who thinks they have big enough of a budget to do that. But I just want to make it unequivocally clear that I love AJ Store, the basketball player. If my school paid a million dollars for AJ Store, I would be I'd be devastated. Why? Because if I'm paying a million dollars for a player, I want a title. Hmm. I want a banner. Hmm. I want to I want it at minimum a Final Four banner if I'm paying that much money. You don't think AJ Store could get you one? I have a hard time thinking that because in his two years of college basketball, what has he won? I mean, I, it doesn't that go for pretty much every player in the portal, though? Like, what champions are hitting the portal? I'm trying to think, did any players from last year's championship team go? Did any UConn players go portaling? No. Like Hunter Hunter Dickinson was like the marquee guy last year, and he was a Big Ten champion his freshman year. But like, I mean, well, if, if okay, look at it like this: if you're a first team All American, like, yeah. Like you can maybe ask for a million dollars. If you're that level of player, you can. But like your your second team all Big Ten, you're asking for a million. Yeah. Just it it just seems kind of crazy. I don't know. Maybe like closed mouths don't get fed. Maybe you ask, but like, uh, was Wisconsin that much better than they were last year? I mean, yeah, like pretty accurately i think so okay so right. like is that, yeah I'll, no they are it's not a trick question okay is that worth a million dollars i don't know it depends on who you are like some schools might only have a million dollars but they might not get anybody better right so like like if you're just throwing a random school out which is not a school that's after aj store but like northwestern you have a million dollars and you could spend it on AJ store or you could spend it on four Ivy league guys four Ryan Langworks. What's the better play? I think it's four Ryan Langborgs. Hmm. Because I, I don't, because I don't know what AJ store and Max Unger are going to give me. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, are you saying that, like if you have basically if you had the funds, a million dollars isn't that much. Um in the in the bigger picture. 
I, I think it depends. Like, Illinois is rumored to be after AJ Storm. and they have multiple millions available, right? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Maybe they try to negotiate it down so they can make other stuff work. So if you have, I don't know what their budget is. If they have a $3 million transfer budget, that's reasonable. And then you spend a million on Damask, and then you chunk up the other million on whatever else you need. Yeah. I don't know. Like, in my head, I'd be like, I take the million from AJ Store try to get Dawson Garcia for like 700 and then try to get somebody else with the other, with the other rest of the, the other 300, a pretty good player. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, I guess it'll be interesting to see. I don't know. Like, what do you think AJ store is worth? Cause if Kansas supposedly Kansas was like, we're not giving you that we'll give you $750,000, which to me, like, Maybe your camp should accept that if you're AJ Store and go to Kansas. It, it, it's so hard because in the NIL world and across college basketball, it's hard not to do the comparison thing because the, the as much as I say like AJ Store, that's crazy. You're asking for a million dollars. Going through it in my head, maybe it's not that crazy because I'm looking at Indiana and Bryson Tucker got seven hundred thousand. Bryson Tucker's best case might be AJ Store. Like, I mean, if, if Bryson Tucker's going for seven hundred thousand, AJ Store should be asked for one point five million. That's that's what I'm saying. So how do you how do you even equate that? I don't know, man. It's weird times. It's weird times because I I both think it's ridiculous to pay a million dollars for AJ Store unless you have unlimited millions and also like market value. I think AJ Store deserves double what <laughs> Bryson Tucker does. Right. Like I I think and all these numbers are speculation at this point. Just throwing that out there. We don't know really anything about this and i'm not even here to report on numbers like that that i don't know but like it's rumored that like last year i think tyson got like two hundred and fifty thousand to come back which is like i can't believe we only got him for 250 i mean that's just i it's so hard not to do the comparison thing i don't even know what hunter's getting but uh i don't know it's it's hard not to do the comparison thing if in this nio world especially if it's like player to player comp like AJ Store to Bryson Tucker, I think, is a solid comp on like type of players. They are like, you know, same position, whatever bill, whatever you want to say. And if Bryson Tucker is getting that, um, if I'm AJ Store, I am asking for like shit. Like you said, I'm asking for double what he got. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I guess we'll see. I don't know. Where do you think Store ends up? Like, is he just gonna end up getting a million from somewhere? I I think so, actually. Uh, I I think I there's there is a school out there who will. Is Illinois going to pay him a million? I think so. What if they don't? Are they getting him? No, because I think somebody will. That's crazy. Don't I mean if let's say you're I don't know Ram School. Let's say you're Florida. You got a five million dollar nil budget. You throwing a million at your store? I mean, yeah, I guess if you have that much money for sure, but. I AJ Store should just go to Miami. I don't know why this is even a thing. Just I, I know Life Wallet can fund it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. It'd be interesting to see where he ends up. All right, second topic today. Uh, Juwan Howard did a sit-down interview for the first time in two years. This is with Brendan Quinn from The Athletic. Go read The Athletic. This is the second time in like two months we've been like, go read The Athletic for a Michigan story. But it's well done. Brendan Quinn does a great job, as he does with everything. Uh, it's notable because Jawan Howard refused to talk to anybody ever. Um, now he is out and now he is talking and trying to present his side of the story. Uh, the notable things that came out of this, <laughs> the, the most notable ones, the third one I'm going to say for last, but the notable things that came out of this for me, uh, first off, Jawan Howard's heart complications were way more serious than anybody knew. Now that sounds stupid in hindsight because he literally had heart surgery. So anybody acting like, oh, it was more serious. He had heart surgery. Like, of course, that's serious. And we knew that was serious at the time. For the last year, I've been screaming, hey, if you had heart surgery and you aren't fit to perform your job, you should probably not be doing your job in a high stress job, right? Like being a division one head basketball coach at Michigan is a very high stress job that requires a lot of work, puts a lot of pressure on yourself physically. And I, no one would have blamed Juwan Howard for – taking some time off and stepping aside. Uh, I wish he would have done that in hindsight. And after reading the article from The Athletic, it sounds like he agrees that he wishes he would have done that in hindsight because there were a lot of additional complications beyond the initial surgery. Like he wasn't sleeping. 
He was supposed to get like secondary surgeries, other operations done and pushed them off and didn't do them because of travel complications from his job in the middle of the year. Like he legitimately may have been putting his health at risk, trying to basically, in his words, put his head down and be a man and get through the season. I, like I, I, what are we supposed to do? Applaud him for that. Thank you for trying. Like it was in everybody's best interest for him to not be doing that. Like go get healthy, go make sure you're going to live and be uh, the fullest extent of your life that you can as a person. Um, and if he had done that, who knows if he ever even gets fired because people would have been taking this serious enough to give him his time. And I, I don't know, it would have put Michigan in a really weird spot, but that was the the loudest takeaway. It was like, wow, the hard stuff was a lot more serious than people realized. And it's hard not to look at the past year and say like, that was a huge reason why everything happened the way it did. Um, second takeaway, uh, he gave his side of the story on the Sanderson incident. He gave his side of the story on the Greg Gard incident. I don't really believe we got anything new there. The, the, results or the the report played out exactly as the incident was said to have played out uh except Juwan basically once again like he did with the guard thing said he felt threatened he said he felt that john sanderson was wanting to fight him and i i don't buy that like i appreciate Juwan telling his story finally and quinn getting it but like it, it's the same story we've heard your whole career when you make mistakes you tell us it's because you feel threatened when you tell Mark Turgeon you're going to kill him, it's because you feel threatened. You shouldn't feel threatened. And you shouldn't, as a head basketball coach, you shouldn't run your program in a way that opens up your strength coach to feel threatened. Um, Jace was the heart of the issue, as we knew, as Sanderson had already said. So it, it, clearly there was frustration from Juwan's side that uh, Sanderson and his lawyers had leaked the story. And Juwan, I think part of why he wanted to sit down was to get his version of the events out. But ultimately, the version of the events were very similar to what Sanderson said. So you, you all look stupid for doing this. And then the third thing that is most important to me at this point is uh, I think both Juwan and Jace want Jace to be on Michigan's roster next year. I mean, there's a, a comment that said, like, Jace might be on Michigan's roster. And I, I don't know if that's Quinn projecting that or if that's Juwan saying that. I think it's Quinn projecting it, but after Quinn sits down with Jawan Howard for him to be projecting the Jace Howard might be on Dusty May's roster next season. It's a massive red flag to me. Uh, I, I mean, I pray that doesn't happen for all parties sake. Like it, it's not just, it, I don't have any ill will toward Jace. I really don't, but like how can a new head coach keep, the ex head coach's son, who was a major part of the Sanderson incident. He was the entire Sanderson incident. Like Jace being a malcontent and causing a scene at practice was what cost you John Sanderson and ultimately cost Joan his job. And we're going to let that guy back in the locker room? Like, if you don't see that as a massive red flag, to me, that's the Howard family being as delusional as they've ever been. I would like to think Dusty May has a brain and will never let that happen. But it scares me terrifyingly so that the Howard family might want that to happen. So uh, what do you what do you make of all this? Uh, all right. A couple of things on this. The first thing that needs to be said, the whole be a man about it, put my head down and be a man and work through it. Uh, one of the most infuriating mindsets that just gets me livid all the time, like it's not manly to take care of yourself. It's manly just to tuck things away and put your head down and not do things because you got to be a man about it. Like being a man about things is taking care of yourself. So like, I agree with all your points on that, that I think everyone knew how serious that was. You, you don't have to explain the seriousness of heart surgery, heart surgery in itself speaks to how serious that type of thing is. And if Juwan was to take time off or step away from that, I don't think anyone would have blamed him. Like you said, they're probably encouraging it. So that whole put your head down, be a man about it thing is the most annoying shit of all time to me. Uh, the other part about it, one, I need that footage. I know there's footage of that incident, and that just needs to be released. I expect TMZ to do their thing on that. They find footage of everything except Wilt Chamberlain's 100-point game. Thirdly, and probably most importantly on this, if Jace is back on the team, I think that says a lot about Jace and Dusty in not a good way. 
I, I think the point of this and the things that you get excited about with Michigan and Michigan fans are excited about is that this is a complete overhaul and start over. Like you are cutting away all the bad parts of the past two seasons and starting over with a handsome tan coach and a quarter zip. Part of that is getting rid of everything that was a part of last year's team. And you're, 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 you're planning on keeping some players. Like you said, I think Namari, you said, uh, might stay cheddars up in the air, but you cannot keep part of the issue of last year's team. And to me last year, the issues with the team were Doug who's gone Terrace. Cause I don't think he got better. He's gone. And then Jace, because Jace was the one who caught basically, like you said, was the center of the issue with the Sanderson thing. So one, I don't know why Jace would even want to be on that team or in that situation. Like, why are you trying to play for your dad's replacement? Why are you trying to play for the guy that they fired your dad for? That makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, and I, I feel like if I'm dusty, I don't want Jace on the team. Like he's not, I don't think he's a part of the future. I don't think he's like, if, if it was Jet or something like that, maybe you look the other way because you want like, but what are there? If you make a pros and cons list about Jay staying on the team, I I can't think of off the top of my head right now something that would go on the pro side. It's all cons for both parties, by the way, too. Like it would make sense for both parties just to go their separate ways. Yeah, no, it just puts everyone in an uncomfortable spot and it's delusional on the Howard family's part to even want to do that. It's super unfair to Dusty. Um, I, again, I think Dusty has a brain and would immediately shut this down, but I, I hate that Dusty's even being put in a spot where he has to say no to that. No no other program in the country would do that. Now, uh, I mean, I, I would think it's probably just Jace trying to pull the whole like, oh, Michigan degree card. I, I believe Jace hasn't graduated yet. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, you know, if you're three years into a Michigan degree with one year left, then maybe that's all it is. If he's just, I, I think that's what it is. If it's a COVID year, he's asking for it's insane, but um, I don't know. Just, just an uncomfortable spot. And yeah, just final, final thing. I mean, look, it's obviously fine to hear out John Howard's side of this. Like I wanted to hear it and we finally heard it. I don't think we heard anything groundbreaking that changes my opinion of him as a man or as a coach. Uh, but like, thanks for doing this now. Like a, a massive part of your problems here were that you wouldn't reveal any of this while you were coaching, that you kept such a, a closed door mentality to everything. Uh, you wouldn't even do like re regular post game press often. So for him to now like, oh, now I'm through it. Now I'm a month out of this job. And here's here's everything I've felt for two years. It once again is a signal of how unfit you were for this job. In, in every possible way, from a, a maturity standpoint, from a health standpoint, from an understanding of like what it takes to, to kiss the baby, shake the hands, and be a head basketball coach at Michigan. Um, there's been a level of delusion for Juwan Howard from the start. And I think this, like him sitting down to do an expose now a month when he's done is kind of the final, final nail in the coffin of the Juwan Howard era. So go read the article. It's interesting, but shout, shout out to Brendan Quinn. Shout out to Brendan Quinn, by the way, he's been on a, it's been on a heater run as far yeah. as pieces. So shout out to him. Truly one of the best writers in the business. I've always enjoyed reading anything he writes. All right, fun topic to end the show today. Final four bold predictions. This is the final segment we're doing until a national champion will be crowned. So let's do uh, one prediction for each game. So give me UConn, Alabama, then Purdue, NC State, and then depending on who you think are going to win those games, I assume we both think it's Purdue and UConn. Give me a bold prediction for the national championship game. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with, UConn and Bama game. I think you're going to get a Stefan Castle game. I'm talking about Stefan Castle is the leading scorer. Stefan Castle holds Mark Sears under 15 points and just has his life in hell. And you just get a monster Stefan Castle game, which starts to fire up discussions about how high he should actually be selected in the NBA draft. Mm, I can see that. I can 100% see that. Like a lockdown Mark Sears game. A lockdown Mark Sears game, and also he scores 22, 6, and 5. Hmm. Okay. I like that. Uh, I'll give my prediction for this game and go back and forth. UConn is down 10 at halftime. Ooh. UConn what? is down 10 at halftime. They win by double digits. And then in the postgame, Dan Hurley blames the slow start on their travel. 
<laughs> that's actually going to happen. I think it could happen. Like the halftime, full time results, and yeah. go ahead and head over to my bookie and place that one. That that that's a very very likelihood that that happens. I think it could happen. He might be sabotaging it intentionally, honestly, just to prove a point. We'll see. Yeah. All right, Purdue NC State prediction. Let's see. The thing is, I'm gonna let you take the one that you made on yesterday's episode because I think that's bold. And if you have another one, I want you to bring that up too. But the the Braden Smith triple double is something I think would happen, but I'm going to go with DJ Burns score single digits in this game and fouls out. <laughs> That's a good one. I was, uh, if it wasn't going to be Braden Smith triple double, I was going to predict DJ Burns doesn't score in this game. Doesn't score at all. Doesn't score in this game. Uh, but since you, you hit DJ Burns, I will stick with what I said yesterday. Braden Smith triple double masterpiece performance. And uh, I'm still holding out hope Braden Smith wins most outstanding player. No disrespect to Zach Eady, but one of my pre-tournament predictions was Purdue makes a final four and Braden Smith is the most outstanding player of one segment of the run. It's going to have to be the final four based on how good Zach Eady has been to the national championship. We both have UConn and Purdue. What is your bold prediction for the national championship? Because I want to make it bold. And I think that UConn actually wins that basketball game. My bold prediction is that Purdue will win, and Lance Jones will be named most outstanding player of the game. So you're predicting something you don't think is happening because you think UConn's winning this game, but you're just predicting something opposite. This is my bold prediction. Ah, that's ridiculous. Okay. Um, ah, all right, I have Purdue winning this game. I don't think that's bold enough. Purdue will win the national championship and it will take a buzzer beater to do so. I told you to bet it. or Well, I told you not to bet it. I told you I'm betting it on yesterday's episode. Uh, yeah, I think I think we get a classic, classic, classic game. Comes down to the final possession. And we get a Purdue game-winning shot at the buzzer to win the national championship over UConn. By who? It's hard. It's hard because the I, action would be Braden Smith. I think the most poetic would be Fletch. Let's go Fletch. Let's say Fletch. Fletcher, Fletcher Lawyer, national championship winning three-pointer to win the game. They wanted that man bench for Cam Heidi. Insane. Never forget. Would be crazy. Uh, okay. Can't wait. One big thing presented by Bigby. What do you got, Cart? Greg, how active are you on TikTok? Not active at all. Not active? You never just scroll? No. Nope. Okay, uh, I'm extremely addicted to TikTok. It is what it is. Um, it's not going to change. Uh, I want to send a shout out to the Orlando Magic, um, their social media account. They had this song that they play after every game when they win. And they like, they'll, they'll troll the other team. They'll make like all these video montages of stuff going on. And the song is an absolute bop, Gregory. Uh, I'll send it to you after this, but it goes a little something like this. <clears throat> Orlando Magic, Orlando Magic, Orlando Magic. Oh, and it, it's the most addicting song of all time. And you're going to know it once I send it to you after we record this. And it's going to be stuck in your head by tomorrow morning. I promise you. Wow. Okay. I'm excited to hear it tomorrow. Uh, my one big thing is I'm hearing some very, 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 very good rumblings right now. Very, very, very good rumblings. Very good rumblings. That's all. That's all I have. Take that as what you want it to be. If I play the song, will, will our video get taken down? I don't think so. You should play the song. Okay. Hold on. Cutest baby. That's cool. Random magic. Yeah, I, we can't even hear that. Something up, something's up with your microphone when you try to play stuff. Couldn't hear it. Right. I'm excited to hear it tomorrow, though. All right. All Thanks right. for safe, tuning in. Safe travels to us. Thanks for watching and supporting all season long. We will see you at the Final Four. Follow Sleepers Media on social media so that you can see everything that we're doing. It all ends here.